Hello audience. Now lately it just seems like all of a sudden everybody around here who owns some kind of early Ford wants it painted or upholstered or restored or something like that. So guess what? We brought in a new project. Now this is a 1929 Ford Model A two-door sedan that we're going to completely restore. Or at least that's the plan. Now this car is currently owned by the second owner, believe it or not. It's only been sold used once, and they still have the original paperwork for it and everything. And in spite of what it looks like from the outside, it's actually a pretty original, pretty intact car. Now they already bought a rebuilt engine, rebuilt rear axle, rebuilt front axle, a new overdrive, and the plan is we're going to do the rest. We're going to take it apart, figure out what it needs, what needs to be replaced, and paint it and make a new interior for it. Now at first glance, it probably just looks like any other Model A project car, but looking closer, it's got quite a few surprises to it. Now obviously, it's been repainted a few times, and most of the original paint has been sanded off. But with a little digging, we did find some sections of it where the paint was still intact. As you can see here, where it was black with a white pinstripe. Yes, white, not gray, not cream. Which is really unusual because the stripe color doesn't match anything in the paint book. And this is not a scheduled color combination for this body. Though because it's so unique, we may return it to that when it's time to repaint it. Another surprise was, after looking over the body pretty thoroughly, we didn't really find much anything wrong with it, other than a few small dents here and there, so we may not have to do much work to it. Looking inside, we've still got all the original seats, with a full set of these jazzy 1950s looking seat covers. I peeled one of them off the driver's side backrest and, surprisingly, discovered the original blue hairline stripe upholstery, which is still in surprisingly good condition. Now the trim panels, at least the upper ones and what's left of the headliner, I believe are also original. Now this part of the frame looks like it's been repainted, probably with a spray can. Now this is probably the original webbing that was on here. And then you look at the top of the frame rail, surprisingly there's no rust pits on it. At least not noticeable from here, which is very surprising. So when we remove the body, I'm curious to see if the ID number is on the other side, and if it's still readable. Now looking at the wheel well around the body, yeah, it's kind of difficult to tell what condition the metal's in with the paint still on it, but all the rivets are still here. I don't see any rust coming through. Same thing with the back here. So everything's looking pretty good so far. Okay, someone installed the exhaust clamp wrong, which I expected, but this is a new one on me. They stuck a nail inside the clamp. What that's supposed to do, I have no idea. That's a new one on me. So remember kids, when you're working on a car, be careful the kind of workmanship you do, because you never know when someone's going to take pictures of it and post it all over YouTube. 
Now the body mount hole, which is just behind the center cross member, as you can see, there's no body bolt. And looking closely, there's no gouges where the lock washer hit it, so I'm guessing it never had one there, which is very strange. And here's the fenders and aprons. Now the splash aprons that go on the sides, I've already started working on them. One of them is in bare metal, the other is being prepped for paint. They didn't really need anything, so that went fast. The fenders from here, they all look pretty good, and they were fitting well, but we'll worry about those later. And there's the dash rail and the visor, also in pretty good shape. The hood, Pretty much the same thing. I haven't looked too closely at it, but it looks pretty good, so we're probably going to reuse it. The running boards, however, are both completely rusted through, so we're probably going to buy new ones. Now where the running board attaches to the apron, you can kind of see a little bit of the remains of the insulation that went on them. Now looking at the cowl section, first thing I notice is there's no rust, no patch panels, no cracks or tears, either inside or out. The firewall looks pretty good. There's just one extra hole in it. There's a snap missing for the floor mat. Otherwise pretty nice. There's a hole worn through by the throttle linkage. Over where the steering column goes, they almost always have a tear in them somewhere. This one doesn't have anything like that, which is very uncommon. Over on the left side, same thing. No tears, no rust, no cracks. So this is all practically in like new condition. It's quite a pleasant surprise. And here's the body. Now looking at it closer. Now, I expected the wood to be completely shot, as they normally are, but at least a lot of it is still pretty good. I don't know if we'll have to replace it or any of it. We'll see. Might just have to patch a few things and leave it at that. Now we're in the process of slowly removing the paint. And... On the back panel, as you can see, we've got most of it down to the bare metal already. And, once again, it's in like new condition. You just can't find much anything wrong with it. Now, inside the body, so far anyway, pretty much the same story. The sills, they're all pretty good. The only thing I really found wrong is these body mount holes back here. On each side, somebody put this plate on here. I remove it. You can see where the body bolt hole was. It's just shattered right here. So what caused that, I don't know. It'll be pretty easy to fix though. And that seems to be all that's wrong with it. I thought this is pretty interesting. On the front of the body, where the cowl bolts up to it, you can see it's still in bare metal where it was bolted up. 
So these never had any coating on them or anything like that. And it's still in pretty good shape. Now we're going to have to either paint these or at least coat them in primer, so otherwise it'll bleed rust through it. I eh, just thought that was interesting. And now looking at the chassis, particularly the frame. Now, this one frame horn is cracked here, which is not much, and it's a little bent up. The other one looks pretty good. The frame rails are pretty straight. They're not cracked or twisted or anything. Most of the rivets are still in it. Again, there's just not any rust pitting at all on the top of the rails, which is very unusual. Rear cross member has this problem, but that's pretty common and easy to fix. The other side, same thing, really nice. Now we did find the ID number, sort of. Now there is a number on here in about the right location, but there's no A in front of it, and there's no star on either side, and it's way over on the side instead of the middle. Now my first thought was, the original number must have been ground off and this is a restamping, but if you look closely, these are not grinder marks, they're draw marks where the frame was stamped originally. So this surface hasn't really been messed with at all. This is the first number this rail has ever had on it. So my guess is this is a replacement frame from the dealer. Very unusual, and yet another surprise. So now the next thing to do is to figure out a plan of what we're going to do with this. Particularly, how much of it we're going to replace, what we're going to repair, and what we're going to leave alone on it. We also found a few other interesting artifacts on this car, but that'll all have to wait for the next video. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.